Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. You know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but the tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today we want to get you fired up about my guest. Her name is Leanne Costello, and we'll be talking about her book, My Two Feet on the Ground. So you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee, or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Started. Hello, Leanne. Thank you so much for joining me here for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Hello. Thank you uh, for having me. Absolutely. Now, as is tradition here on the show, we like to give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves to perhaps those few people out there that may not be familiar with you or your work. So, first question for you is: Tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you you? Well, I'm from uh, Melbourne, Australia. I live Bayside, so I'm in a great part of the world. Uh, I was in the corporate world for three decades and just uh, making a change now. I always wanted to do uh, art and writing and, and, and here I am. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, being an author, Is that something that you have always wanted to do? Did you find that life presented the opportunity and you said yes? So many authors, this is something they've wanted to do since they were, you know, in high school. But so many others I've found, they said, I would have never guessed that this is where I would be in this point of my life. How how do you feel about being an author? Is it something you've always wanted to do? Well, yes. Well, it's a bit of both. I've always wanted to uh, write a children's book, uh, but really never thought it would happen. I thought it was uh, a bit of a pipe dream, really. And uh, and then, you know, in, in 2017, I woke up saying the, the first few words or lines of, of the book. And uh, so when I woke up in the morning, I thought, this is pretty special. It had happened before, but I ignored it. And I was ready to make a change in my life. I was, you know, really uh, just felt really unsatisfied by my career and, and wanted to do something more meaningful. So I think I was more open to what, was presented to me, um, and so yeah, it all happened from there. Hmm. Hmm. I can definitely understand that. I find that so many people are are starting to expand their horizons, if you will. Um, it doesn't matter what uh, you may have gone to college or university for. Um, you can feel a shift, and I think more people are starting to take that shift on and say, of course, new challenges, new me, let's see where this goes. So I definitely understand that. Now, the title of your book, My Two Feet on the Ground, I like the title. How did you come about the title of your book? Well, it came from the words um, that I woke up saying, um, my two feet on the ground, and um, and it all went from there. I, I knew that um, it was about being present, which was what I was learning about at the time, about um, uh, being aware of what's going on around you rather than what's in your head. So it all made sense to me. So... Um, I, the words I woke up saying were my two feet on the ground, and yeah, it all came from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love how people that are creative, uh, so many times there is a creative story around the title of the book, which is why I asked that question, because most of the time it's something that people will say, you know, I I never would have imagined that this would be the title, but boy, does it work, or I was given the title in a dream, or much like you, you woke up saying those words. I, I love that. I'm, I'm glad that I uh, asked you that question. Now, as you, you see that it is a children's book, 
and I know that everyone has their own understanding of what it means to uh, have a children's book. With that being said, um, is it appropriate for our children as young as kindergarten or perhaps uh, third, fourth, fifth grade? What age group um, or what grade in school are we talking about? I would say it would suit uh, preschool, preschool kinder, and uh, you know, so from four uh, or four years old up to eight or nine. But it's it's a book that would help even the reader, you know, the the grandparent, the the mother or father reading the book. But it's it's targeted for young children, uh, school primary school age children and kinder. Um, but I, I hope that the person reading it, it will be food for thought for them as well and, uh, and provide, you know, a sense of comfort to the reader too. So. Hmm. I love that you were mindful like that. Um, so many times I find that um, things that are meant for little children and when they have older siblings and mom says read the book, you know, to your to your little brother or sister, like, oh my goodness, not that one. Because it's, you know, it's too babyish or you know, they're not having a fun time reading along. But when I find that the author is very mindful of the person that's reading the story to the younger child, um, they tend to have a good time too. It makes for story time to be fun. So very, uh, very appropriate. Uh, I love it. I love it. Now, speaking of mindfulness, I know that a lot of people talk about that when it comes to women's ministry or being mindful of your partner in um, marriage enrichment classes and all of that. But if I understand correctly, you are talking about mindfulness, but you're, you're instructing our little ones. Why was it important to do that? It was well. As adults, we we well, everyone has has their challenges, and it always struck me that well, how do children learn to be mindful or, or cope with challenges? You know, as adults, you know, we can look things up on the internet, we can you know hear about the latest book from our friends, or you know watch TV. But wh- where do children turn to? And and for that, for when they're scared or feeling alone or nervous and I always wanted to do something to help children so it was always there at the back of my mind and um, when I was going through my own challenges in 2017 it came up again you know I thought well, what, imagine you know how difficult it must be if you're a child so that's what this was all about and if more of us were present and grounded and it does take practice to do it um, the world I think would be a more stable or less angry place you know um, mindfulness is about being more focused on what's going on around you where you are what you're sensing feeling doing and getting you out of your head where often you might have uh, you know, recurring thoughts that are unhelpful going over and over in your mind. It just centers you and brings you back to the room or your office or your car or wherever you are and uh, and makes you feel less anxious. So if, if children learn this from a young age, it's a great tool that you can take through your whole life you know and and it can change the way you deal with um, a a challenge um, facing a confrontation or um, and just looking at things in a different way Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love your answer and you are so right if as an adult you are not talking about dealing with or concerned about being a mindful individual then you're not going to teach your children you know we tend to teach our children what's important to us what what we talk about on on a regular basis so you are you are so right there thank you for for that answer now for for so many of the authors that I have spoken to over the years, there's something um, that prompts them to 
start writing about a particular subject. For so many people, it's you know a life-changing event, of course, that they want to share about. Uh, for others, it could be something happened to a neighbor or a family member, and they said, I need to share this story. Was there any particular thing that prompted you to, to really get this story out? Um, not saying that you were forced to do it or anything like that, but is there anything that kind of prompted you or nudged you into making sure that the book got out sooner than later? Yeah, sure. So in 2017, I was, you know, my, um, I could, wasn't satisfied with my career and I was going through uh, my own anxiety um, in terms of a, a relationship and it was starting to spiral out of control and and there was some, you know, post-traumatic stress from um, previous events in my life, and it was all just coming together, uh, and it really was uh, starting to spiral. And and so I came across Eckhart Tolle's book, uh, or Tolle's book. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. The Power of Now. So I found that at an airport, and uh, I coming back from a holiday in Bali and I thought what a perfect thing to read on the plane and uh, and then I came across a, another mindfulness a yoga teacher from Holland uh, her name was Esther Tule and they both were talking about the same thing about being present and uh, getting out of your head particularly when things are really bad and you're in a, a real moment of panic come back to where you are what do you feel what do you see and with more practice doing that more and more it becomes just a part of your daily life you know you I can you know snap in and out of it whenever I need to and uh, and so when these words came through from a dream and I woke up saying them it all just came together beautifully you know as I was going through my own challenges I was thinking about kids oh my goodness what if they were going through something similar how would they do it and then these words came through and I just knew it was really something special and I just instantly knew intuitively or instinctively it was going to uh, help people and I needed to really complete this and and see it through Mm -hmm. it, it is so important, I think, that when when an author realizes that there are certain cues, that there are certain um, things going on, and they, they see the writing on the wall, you know, it's like they can see the neon sign saying, you know, stop or go, do it now, and that you're able to, to receive that and, and be able to move forward. I, I love it. Now, with kids' books, illustrations are very important. If the book does not catch uh, the little one's eye, then you may not have a successful uh, children's book. With that being said, tell us about the illustration story. So the illustrations uh, were done by me and I felt that that was important because the words had come from from soul or from somewhere, um, you know, uh, higher up I felt that the the pictures needed to match or have the same authenticity as the words so the pictures in, in a picture book need to also tell their own little story and of there's something really special about them they they and particularly if you're reading it in a in a paperback and not an ebook there's a real tactile sort of quality to them and uh, they're bright and they're a little bit different and um, and I've been told that there's really something special about them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I have found that um, there I've interviewed some other authors that have done the illustrations themselves as well and I find that when they are done by the author, there's something a little special about them and then perhaps it's because it really and truly is the the vision of what you 
see about how your book should should look and that's someone else's interpretation of your words but really and truly what what you see in your mind's eye I I love it I love it well it is time for us to go to break Leanne but before we do can you please remind everyone what is the title of your book where can we get a copy and of course how do we stay in contact with you so my book is called My Two Feet on the Ground. You can get it on Amazon and, and all um, online booksellers or um, and uh, also at Balboa Press. And you can find me at on Facebook at List of Dreams, Art, Reiki and Books. Alrighty everyone, now you know where you can get a copy of the book. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. My guest today is Leanne Costello, and we're talking about her book, My Two Feet on the Ground. Now, Leanne, one other question that I have for you regarding the process of the book, and that is determining how you would publish. How did you determine if you were going to either self-publish or use a publishing house? When you were at that stage of, of um, getting the book prepared to be released, how did you make that determination? I decided to self-publish pretty early on. Um, the reason is that the book is very different. It's a, it's a well-being book for children, and um, I'd, it's so it's not your usual storybook. And uh, and um, I'm going through a, a a publishing house. You c it can take twelve months to hear back from people. They have received so many manus manuscripts, and I just knew that the message needed to get out there and it's funny by the time it was published a year later we entered COVID so I'm so glad that I made the decision to self-publish and I thought uh, I would go with Balboa Press they're connected to Hay House so I, they uh, are known for doing such beautiful books about helping people and I thought, well, it would be nice to be connected to uh, such an organisation. So, so self-publishing was a very uh, easy decision for me to make. Mm -hmm. And you're right, uh, Babella Press does have uh, a very good reputation and um, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to make the decision and like you said, oh my goodness, I cannot imagine uh, waiting, you know, to hear back from, from the, uh, a publishing house and then COVID comes up and it's like, oh no, because so many people shut down and didn't even go to half staff, but even, you know, smaller than than that, even like a fourth of, of their usual um, uh, a workplace employees. So it's, yeah, I can, I can imagine how difficult that would have been for someone. I'm glad you followed your first mind. I love it. I love it. Now, I do realize, like you said, that, that COVID has um, touched everyone's life across this great earth of ours. But prior to, were you able to do any interacting, um, any interactions with any of the readers? Were you able to do like the book expos or do any book signings or, you know, any type of event where you were able to get feedback from them? Or has that not happened quite yet due to COVID? No, it hasn't happened quite yet. I've I've done a couple of interviews, um, some via Zoom and some via uh, phone, but um, but I had some tragedy. My my mum was came unwell and and sadly passed away last year. So just taking care of family issues and and just. Uh, promoting the book where I can and and um, and through some opportunities that have come up very fortunately mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah so it's, it's happening slowly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I can definitely I can definitely understand that you know 
uh, with with all of that with all of that happening. And my condolences to hear about the passing of of your mom. I think that most people, uh, our moms are definitely special people to us, and it, it also it always saddens your heart when you hear of someone um, their mother passing away. So definitely condolences to you for that. Uh, during this time, you are you are so right. I know that um, even myself with with everything that that we do, Daily Spark TV had to shift, you know, how we did things because we were not filming in studio anymore because of COVID. So you're right. You do have to come up with some creative ways of doing things and and not lose any momentum that you have, but learn how to do it differently. I tell you, we've definitely learned to be creative during during this time. I, I love that we were able to do that. Now, when you were putting the book together, and we kind of we talked about mindfulness being one of the things that the book teaches our little ones. So, when you were writing, were there any other um, themes or topics that you tried to include or kind of weave into the story as well, or is that perhaps? Um, something that you may do with a different book. Does does each one deal with a particular topic? Yes, you're right. So there, the book draws on uh, random everyday activities or challenges that a, your average child might face. Um, so it talks about um, first day at school and that could be if it is your first day or it could be the first day at a new school. Um, it, it touches on um, you know, nerves surrounding school camp or a school concert, uh, tests, um, also about you know, little fights um, that you might have, little disagreement you might have with a, a friend at school or a family member and, and also about you know, feelings of being alone and, um, or a bit lost. So so it, it touches on all those things and, and subtly demonstrates how you can remain positive or grounded and still, um, still have your sense of self throughout all of these things. Hmm. And you know, you you said a really important thing there, and and that is the staying grounded. I want to definitely follow up on that piece because during this time, the world is stressed. We we may not realize that that you are are stressed in the moment, um, but I think more and more people are starting to realize the. Um, the mental fatigue that that many people are experiencing due to COVID. Your your world has been turned upside down or you're worried and concerned about a loved one or about yourself uh, during this pandemic. How how were you able to to address and deal with staying centered and staying grounded? Well, firstly, it's perhaps having a bigger picture view, you, you know, COVID is, is such a huge thing. Uh, it's affecting the whole world. So there, there must be a big reason for it. So firstly, I trust that there's a, a bigger purpose to it all. Uh, and secondly, um, just taking in nature, um, taking in what's around me, um, what I'm feeling, what I'm hearing, um, you know, am I sitting in a comfortable chair, going for a walk, sitting amongst nature and and appreciating um, the small things, counting your blessings every day, you know. Some people write a gratitude list or you might just rhyme off two to three things that uh, you're thankful for every day and I think... Um, it puts things back into perspective. Another thing is exercise, walking. It might be yoga for some people, but for me, walking and yoga are really important and I love riding my bike. So I try to do something that I enjoy uh, every day and moments of quiet. I do try to meditate even if it's just for five minutes every day. So I think they're the things that help me. And uh, yeah, it's important uh, to find what works for you. 
I could not agree with you more. I know that that is something that I've been trying to uh, suggest to um, so many people that are in the, the memberships, um, uh, the, the groups or the pages um, where I'm able to share, get out and do something that's going to get you out of your head. And you are you are so right about, about that. Uh, good advice going on today. I love it. I love it. Now, as far as what is next, now I remember asking this question in 2021 when we were thinking that 2022 would be the, I'm sorry, asking this question in 2020 thinking that 2021 was going to be the answer, right? That we would all be back to normal and we found that that wasn't quite the case. So now we are looking forward to 2021. Uh, perhaps being our saving grace. Do you have any plans for writing any new books or uh, if the world is safe, of course, to, to get back to normal, uh, going out there and doing those book expos and doing those things where your readers are able to, to have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time with you? Oh, most definitely. Um, yeah, we're all excited for 2022. Fingers crossed with the vaccine, things will get better. Uh, yes, so I am nearly finished my second book. I'm doing another picture book uh, for young children, uh, probably the ages three to eight, and I'm very excited that that's nearing completion. And next year I will be starting writing a, a story, a, a, short, a short novel for um, middle readers and, uh, and also I plan on opening my Reiki studio and uh, my website, uh, so List of Dreams, uh, where I, all my creativity and creations and, and plans for helping people uh, will be all there uh, online and also in my studio. So I'm really looking forward to bringing it all together uh, and out into the world. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, absolutely, absolutely, and congratulations on those future endeavors, and, and may they definitely be be successful. Um, I applaud anyone whose goal is to not only bring in more mindfulness, but that love and that authenticity into the world. We, we definitely need to figure out ways to bring us closer together, as opposed to those things that, that divide us and, and keep us separate, so I, I applaud you on that. Well, let me tell you, Liam, I have really enjoyed spending time with you here today on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. But before I let you go, because we are just about out of time, I would love for you, if you can, to uh, give us a, a word of encouragement, be that, that it is for our little ones, since you have written a kid's book, or if there's any uh, words of encouragement or inspiration to our aspiring authors. I'll let you decide which one you would like to um, uh, give those words to, but if you could share your thoughts there. Well, I would uh, thank you for that opportunity. I would love to say for everyone to be kind and patient with yourselves and kind and patient with everyone else too and, and remember that you're loved and, uh, and uh, to smile every day and, and, and hopefully that smile will, will catch on. Absolutely. Smile. I love it. I love it. Smiles are contagious and there is something that we need to spread around is that love, happiness, and joy. I couldn't agree with you more. Well, Leanne, thank you again for spending time with me here. But before I let you go, can you remind us one last time, the title of your book, where can we get a copy? And of course, how do we stay in contact with you? So the title is My Two Feet on the Ground. You can find it on Amazon and where all good books are sold. And you can find me at uh, oh, on Facebook at List of Dreams, Art, Reiki and Books. Thank you again for being a guest on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Thank you. 
And listeners, thank you for spending time with us here as well. I hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you again today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for our Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Buckchester. You know what I like to do on my show. I want you to say it with me, enlighten, inspire, and empower you to become your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Fire. And today we want you fired up about my guest. His name is Dan Morrow and we're talking about his book, A Heartbeat in Danger. So you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee or get your tea because we are about to get started. Hello, Dan. Thank you so much for joining me on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Well, thank you so much for having me, Dr. Angel. I really appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I cannot wait to talk to you about your book, but we have a little bit of a tradition around here, and that mm-hmm. is I allow my guests to introduce themselves to perhaps those few folks out there that may be unfamiliar with you or your work. So first question, Dan, is um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you, you? Well, I, I tell you what, I... Uh, I'm kind of new to authoring. Uh, This is only my second book, quite honestly. So I'm kind of new to the process. I'm kind of getting my feet wet as I go here. But uh, this book in particular, I'm very proud of for what it stands for and what it talks about. Um, Been a Christian like most of my life. Uh, I believe that this is a gift from the Lord. I definitely want to use it for his glory and just to see how it can touch people's lives and impact hearts and minds. I love it. I love it. Now, speaking of being an author, is that something that you've always wanted to do, or did you find that life simply presented the opportunity and you said yes? Uh, Yeah, absolutely, yeah. From the time I was a kid, I have always felt more comfortable writing rather than talking to people because it gives me a chance to uh, channel exactly what I want to say and put it in a format that makes sense rather than just, you know, blurt out what I'm saying and make nonsense out of it. So, yeah, writing has always been uh, very easy for me, and it's uh, just a great format. I, I love the art form of writing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I really like asking that question because I think for so many of our um, aspiring authors out there, their answer is going to be similar as well. It's like, mm-hmm. I am so much more comfortable right, behind the right. laptop or, you know, pen and paper. <laughs> you know, it's like, yes. get up and talk. Are you crazy? I don't want to do that. You know, so <laughs> I, I definitely, I definitely understand. I remember someone said that. It was like, Dr. Angela, how do you get in front of people and talk? And it's like, it's easy breezy. But... <laughs> that's the superpower that God has given me, right? So everyone has to know exactly what they have been purposed for. So I I love that. I love it. Now, the title of your book, A Heartbeat in Danger. I love the title. Now, did you find that the title came to you first? Did it come out of your writings? How did you choose those words to entitle your book? It kind of came generically from the way I was writing, and it, it's, uh, if I may just real quick explain what the book is, if that's okay. Um, it's a story about a teenage girl who's facing an unexpected pregnancy, and she's carried in a dream state to, into the future to see what her child's life may or may not become. And the unique part about this is I don't tell you what to think. I don't tell you what to believe. You read the story, and basically you make up your mind as you go. And... I can guarantee it's going to challenge you because I'm the one who wrote it and it challenges me every time I've read it. So, um, but yeah, it came for me generically from the book itself and kind of was born out of those, uh, those hardships that are, are, are the, the, the character faces. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. A little bit of intrigue there. And it's <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. you know, it's like, stop trying to read the last page of the book to figure out how right. it's going to end. It's like, just enjoy <laughs> the story. Go on the journey right. with the author and, and see where that, that lands you. I love it. Now, for so many people, there has been something that has inspired them to uh, write a particular story or a particular chapter. There was some prompting. Um, I have heard every expert explanation from God woke me up in the middle of the night and said, do it and do it now. I want to ask you, did you have any particular inspiration or did anything nudge you that said, now is the time? Yeah, there was an uh, incident. This is actually born from real life. Uh, my, my daughter's best friend, who she's known from third grade, so we consider her our second daughter. Um, she was facing the same situation. She was pregnant. Boyfriend wasn't in the picture. Uh, you know, her parents had been divorced for a very long time. And I was taking her to a friend's house, and she was in a panic. She was just she was just panic-stricken and crying in the car. And I didn't really know what to tell her. I didn't know what to say because I'm not really her father. But that conversation stuck with me that here's this person in a situation. She doesn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And she needed support. She needed love. She needed guidance. And it was kind of born from that. It was kind of percolated in my mind for a long time. Uh, it's actually about 10 years, to be honest with you. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, that conversation stuck with me. And that was, the, that was where the idea for this book came from. Oh, I love the fact that you were able to um, not only be there for her in that mm-hmm. moment, but that you were mindful enough to to be there but also not cross a line. You know, so many mm-hmm. times I think right. that people forget and it's like you you did that as though you're the parent and you're not the parent, you know, you can, you can be a great aunt, <laughs> uncle, you know, godfather, yeah. godmother, best friend, all of those things. But it's like, but we're not the parent. So we, we shouldn't necessarily right. take on that role, but we can be that responsible adult mm-hmm. that gives that guidance. And it sounds like that's exactly what you did. Right. And I'm and so then, sure she appreciated that. Mm-hmm. Oh, she did. The, the, the cool thing is, is just to let you know and fill you in on the blanks here. She actually has three kids now. The oldest one is nine years old. Uh, the youngest one's about four or five months old. And the, uh, the middle one just turned four years. So she's got a great family and she's got a great yeah. support system. So it's wonderful to be a part of her life. Absolutely. And I'm I'm so I'm so glad that she was able to get over over that obstacle that looked so big at that moment, right? But I I tell people all the time it's like our God is much bigger than that obstacle. So I'm so glad that 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 happens. Now as far as the ideal reader for the book. Would you say that you've written it in a way where um, someone as young as high school would be able to to read it and understand uh, everything that's going on, or should they be perhaps college age and older? I think it's really, you know, the, the age range, I really didn't, wasn't thinking about that, and maybe I should have, but I think the age range really is just anybody who is cognizant of what can happen as a result of, uh, you know, having se- unprotected sex and, and sex in general. But anybody who's cognizant of that, the circumstances they face, people who've been through it, people who are going through it, people who are just watching from the outside. Uh, it can be read by, I know I had a father buy a copy for himself and his daughter so they could read it together. So really, I think it's a broad range of, of anybody who really is touched by this, this subject matter, and quite honestly, who isn't touched by it? I mean, it's it's not going to go away, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things I think we can approach it from a different perspective, and that's what this book tries to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's so much going on in the lives yeah. of our teens nowadays that we really need to be that mindful adult for them. Exactly. And I know that, that that word sometimes scares people, but I use it from the point of just be aware of what's going on in their world. Exactly. And when they need you, listen. Exactly. Sometimes, you know, yeah. we don't always need to talk. <laughs> it's like sometimes yeah. it's like just listen and and create that safe space for them to come to you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think they'll, they'll come to you more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody needs it. And, and I mean, as an adult, we need that time to... Uh, to ourselves and we just need somebody to sit beside us and just they don't even have to say a word just put your arm around your shoulder and just love on them that's that's all we need sometimes yeah absolutely absolutely 
Absolutely. And sometimes those are the best words. The the, yes. the lack of conversation in some moments is yes. the best thing you could say with that person. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Now, as far as how should we read the book? Now, you made a comment. A dad bought a copy for not only himself but for his daughter. I yes. love it. Shout out to that dad for being like the best dad <laughs> ever in that exactly moment. Right? Right. I love that. With that being said, is there a particular way that we should um, that we should read the book so that we get the most out of it? I know many times authors will write it so that you should read it cover to cover, you know, simply page after page. Other times it's do it chapter by chapter. Um, some maybe like a devotional where you read a few pages, put it down, and then the next day pick up and and keep going. What's your suggestion there, or does it or does it matter? Is it up to just how the reader wants to read? I was just, I was just going to say that uh, Dr. Angela that yeah it's really kind of up to the uh, reader because some people will read it you know in one sitting uh, some people may have to like you know take a bite chew on it for a little bit take another bite and, and come back to it some may just want to sit there and just wade deep into it and try to figure things out and really have that affect them so it's really kind of up to the reader how they want to read it and the, and the cool thing is is this kind of a segmented book where each chapter is a little bit different because there's different storylines are going on. Uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a fresh perspective as far as it's not like one linear type of story. It, it dodges from like, you know, a doctor to a lawyer to being in prison to being homeless. So it's all over the map. And so it, it gives a fresh perspective on different things, but, the, but there's a continuity to it as far as the questions that are asked and as far as what goes on. So... Um, it really just depends on the reader. Uh, I, I don't want to see, again, I don't want to tell you how to read it or whatever. It's, it's really up to the reader, I guess, to, and how they want to digest it. I like that, though. That, that reminds me or, or makes me think about how we watch certain movies. Some movies yeah. are shot from that perspective, right? You're, you're following right. along in the day of the life of character one, and it's like, oh, my goodness. And then all of a sudden, it switches to the next guy. But you don't forget what happened to the first guy. You're like, oh, right. okay. And it just pulls you along. And then you have that moment where you see how they all overlap and intertwine, and you say, oh, that was such a great movie. Yeah, so that, it sounds yeah, like... <laughs> Right, That's yeah. exactly what you've done here. So just just in case for someone who goes, what? It works. Don't worry. It works. It definitely works. It does. Now, it does. you mentioned um, a term called faith in real life. I mm -hmm. like those words together. What is that and why was it important to talk about it? Being in church the way I was growing up, um, that's all I really knew was just the regimentation of you know Sundays and how they worked. But as I got older, I exposed myself to many, many different denominational practices, and it was very fascinating. I've always loved church. I've always been fascinated by what people do, why they do it. Uh, some were really cool. Some were questionable, but that's okay. Um, but, but it was just unusual and, and unique to see that. The one thing I kept coming back to was people kept saying that, you know, the greatest place we can be is on our knees before the throne of Christ. Yet when a tragedy hit them and they were on their knees, they would complain. And I'm thinking either you have the faith that God is going to carry you through this and you look to that faith and you hold on to it or it's abandoned you. So to me, faith in real life is simply saying, you know what, life is going to be hard. It's going to hit you. It's going to knock you down. But doggone it, you hold on to that faith and you carry that with you no matter where you go, no matter how hard things get. You've got your faith and you, you better rely on it at those hard times. So that to me is, excuse me, faith in real life that it makes a difference. It gives you the hope to get through that and endure whatever comes your way. I love that answer. And <laughs> guys, you. I'm, I'm telling you, we, we ha I cannot agree with you more. Faith in real life. I love it. Well, it is time for us to go to break. But Dan, before we do, can you remind mm -hmm. everyone, please, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And of course, how do we stay yeah. in contact with you? Yeah, uh, the, the title is A Heartbeat in Danger. Uh, you can get it on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Uh, if you're on the Internet, you can go to Christian Faith Publishers. They've got an a author page just for me. Uh, I have an author page on Amazon as well if you want to take a look at that. Uh, I'm on Facebook uh, as well. Um, you can look me up at author Dan Morrow on Facebook, and uh, you'll be able to tell because I've got a picture of myself. I talk about my book continually on, the, on that page pretty much. <laughs> like to crack a lot of jokes as well. But, uh, yeah, you'll find me there on Facebook, author Dan Morrow. 
I love it. Alrighty, everyone, now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for our Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Dan Morrow, and we're talking about his book, A Heartbeat in Danger. Now, if I didn't say it before, let me say it here. I love the title of the book, especially <laughs> with uh, when you explain, you know, kind of the behind the scenes part. It's like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's good, um, yeah. and it really, it really <laughs> puts you in that headspace to to be able to follow along with the story. Now, with that being said, what are some of the the takeaways um, that you want to make sure that the reader understands? I know many authors will put um, gems of messages throughout their storyline, and it's like, well, they might miss this one, so let me put another one here. And just in case they missed that one, <laughs> I'll give you one more. Uh, well, what are some takeaways that you hope that the reader gets from having read your book? You know, honestly, I think the biggest one, and and this was the main thought as I was writing the book, or the deeper I got into it, is just how precious motherhood really is. Uh, You know, it doesn't seem like it from the content of the book and what, you know, the character's going through and what she faces and and the questions that she's asked, but it continually keeps coming back to the fact that motherhood is important, being being there for your kids, protecting them, uh, loving them, and picking them up when they fall down, because they are going to fall down. Um, but just the importance of being a mother and, and being involved in their lives. I think that's, that's the biggest takeaway that, that I look at when I read the book. Now, other people might take something different away, and again, it's going to you know, depend on the reader. But uh, like I said, as I was writing it, and the deeper I got into the story and I dug around for this character, that, that was what kept coming back to me was you know, the strength of motherhood and the, and the, uh, uh, the gift that God has given mothers to mm-hmm. be that strong because, man... I've watched yeah. it with my own wife, you know. So yeah, it's it's incredible the strength that's there. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, I I couldn't agree with you more. I love being a mom. Now, don't get me wrong. Fantastic. I, I don't <laughs> mind being a wife. Don't, don't get me wrong. Love you, honey. Right, but but at the same time, I love being um, I love being a mom, and I. I took that job, that role on quite seriously. So I, I do hear hear what you're saying. Now, being a pastoral counselor, of course, doesn't help with me being willing to listen. But at the same time, it's just part of my personality. And I think that some people need to or have to work on that part just a little bit yes. more. They have the taking care of the bills and the clothes and the food and all that part done. But it's the that bedside manner, if you will, that they really need to work on that portion of just being right. there for their kids. So thank you for, for that reminder. Um, we Absolutely. can always add that to our list of things to do this week, ladies. It's just work go. on being the go. best mom we can be. I love it. I love it. Now, when it comes to current events, um, I know that for some people, they say, Dr. Angela, I don't watch the news. I don't want to hear all of the stuff that's going on in the world, from COVID to politics to natural disasters. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can understand that. But there are many more people that are listening in there, and they're trying to figure out how do we get from point A to point next with everything going on in the world. How would you say that your book ties into any particular thing that's going on when it comes to perhaps our youth or for our young adults that are trying to figure out how do they start this journey of being an adult? How would you say your book ties into either of those? I think um, the biggest thing there would be choices matter. No matter what it is you do, no matter whether it's, you know, spending money on, you know, item A or, you know, saving it in the bank, whatever it is, choices are going to matter. And, uh, you know, as you learn through you, through life, sometimes you make a wrong choice, sometimes you make a fantastic choice, and some you just knock out of the park. But I think that's the biggest thing to take away from this book is I, I liken it to this, and I'll try to be quick. Uh, the story about the rich man that came to Jesus and said, you know, hey, what does it take to follow you? And Jesus straight up told him the truth. This is what you got to do. 
And in church, oftentimes we'll focus on that rich man walking away from Jesus and saying, oh, man, he was right there. He had everything for you. He was right there. But what we don't focus on is the fact that Jesus allowed that man to walk away choosing his own way and how much it had to break his heart and how much he wanted to run after him, but he allowed him the freedom to choose what he wanted to do with his life. And that, to me, is one of the hardest things as a parent that I've ever had to face. And that, again, comes back to choice. You're going to make your choices. You're going to decide. And some you're going to get in trouble for, and some you're not. So to me, I think the biggest thing is just try to figure it out, get wise counsel, get smart people around you, listen mm-hmm. to the people that have been through it, and, and take, it, uh, take the advice from there. I could not agree with you more. And you're right. People don't concentrate Mm -hmm. or um, very little attention is made to the decision that that Jesus made not to run Mm -hmm. after. Because right. most folks would say, I can't believe, you know, right. if, if that were my big brother or my, <laughs> my father or my, you know, they right. would be like, what's wrong with you, man? You know, yes. come here. But yes. isn't, isn't that just like um, God to, from the very beginning, to, to give us the choice and not to have made us robots or drones or, mm-hmm. you know, these things that, that don't have free will. But boy, when you make the decision to actually turn yes. or to pivot or to come back, it's so much better. So I, I like that story. Thank you for reminding you. everyone. Well, mm-hmm. the, the other thing is, is that when you choose to love someone rather than you're forced to love someone, choosing means more to you. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to the decision that this character has to make. Is she going to choose to love her child or what is she going to do? And that's the hardest thing in the world to do is, is to try to allow somebody to do that and trust them that they're going to make a good decision. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, becoming an adult uh, is, can be a doozy. And I tell you, <laughs> we do not. We, everyone doesn't always tell you the fine print about becoming no, an don't. adult. <laughs> I, I saw a post <laughs> earlier today and someone was like, wait a minute, why was I rushing to become an adult? Yes. I have to go to work every Seriously. day. I have to spend my money at the grocery store. I have to cook the food that I bought at the grocery store. I have to wash the dishes. It's like, I yeah. need to call my mother and tell her thank you. <laughs> It looks like, yes, it puts a whole call new perspective on everything. Oh, yeah. You get a whole different perspective. Absolutely. Totally different. And, and I love it. I am, just, I am just getting a kick out of watching <laughs> this next generation adulting and learning yes, what it means it to be an adult. It's, it's and like, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what we I went love through. It. Ha, ha. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's like, again, we're not going to tell you how the story ends, but boy, are you going to enjoy the journey. So absolutely. I love that. I love that. Now, speaking of journey, I want to kind of um, switch gears just a little bit, and I enjoy uh, asking my guests about their journey as an author. We have a lot of aspiring authors out there that um, email me on a regular basis saying, thank you, Dr. Angela, for, you know, asking those sets of questions because they really do keep us fired up and and keep us moving forward. So with that being said, when you were in the process of writing, did you find that you needed uh, to be away from, like, the hustle and bustle of the day? Some folks it's like I can go to Starbucks and write because I want a little kind of background noise, but I don't want people mm-hmm. talking directly to me. Other right. folks want to go off, you know, to the to the lake house where it's totally and completely silent. Um, what worked for you as far as environment? What worked for you for you to be able to really hear your thoughts and to get them down? Uh, you know, the, the silence works for me the best, uh, and I would prefer to work in absolute silence. Unfortunately, living in a two-bedroom apartment, um, we don't have a lot of spaces to be quiet here. So uh, that, that's at a minimum. But uh, I guess the thing for me is honestly, you know, some days I'll get up and, you know, it'll be like five o'clock in the morning and inspiration will hit me and I'll sit there and I'll take off on a tangent. And I'll write, you know, five, six pages and I'll just tear it up. Um, other days I'll sit down and I'll pull something up and I'll maybe write, you know, two sentences and I'm done. Or I'll go back over a paragraph and I'll rework it five, six, 12 dozen times. 
So it's really just trying to find the groove of discipline to say, you know what, I'm going to sit down and write when I don't feel like it. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to look to the Lord to inspire me. I'm going to, I'm going to look for that fresh spark to come. And really, my whole thing is, is, if I'm not doing it for him, then what am I doing? If I'm not writing for his glory, then, then what's the purpose? And because if the gift is from him, he, he enabled me with this gift. I know it's from him. He's convinced me of it. And if I'm not doing that for his glory or if I'm not trying to, uh, you know, bring up certain things about the Bible in a different way, then what's the purpose to my books? You know, it might as well just read like a Tony Robbins book. Nothing wrong with Tony Robbins, by the way. But <laughs> you might as well just like read, you know, fluffy stuff that really, you know, mm-hmm. is going to fade away. So that, that's to, that to me is the biggest challenge to myself, first of all, is make sure I'm right uh, before I sit down and start writing something and make sure that it, it makes sense. Yeah. Mhm mhm. I I love I love that perspective, you know, to to understand that this is what God has tasked you with and Correct. to take it Correct. um with that understanding of of said responsibility. Mm-hmm. And you're you're right. There are so many people that um when they come to me for um that accountability sake and they're saying, "Well, I tried it and it didn't work." And it's like, "Okay, you're really good at what you do, but did you ask God, did you did you run it past God? Right. If that's right. what you were supposed to do, or did you just you know approve it well, yourself? And and so if, many if people I, will say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. If I could go off topic real quick, uh, the reason I say it was made very clear to me was I was fired from a job that I really enjoyed doing. I did it for about four years. Uh, I walked mm-hmm. out to the car, and the first thought in my head was this sucks. And then the second thought in my head, I swear it was clear as day. It was like a voice telling me. Now you can write. And I looked up and I'm like, okay, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life. If I don't follow this and discipline Mm -hmm. myself to follow through, then I'm going to regret it. So to me, it was very clear. To other people, it may not. You may have to struggle a little bit, but doggone it. Keep trying. Keep seeking God's face. That's the biggest thing. No matter what it is, keep looking at him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And And it's true. When it's in God's timing, it is yes. so absolutely perfect. Yeah. I um, shared on another interview for for those who don't know my story about the whole radio part and kind of zipping through it. You know, I started just just doing a podcast very humbly. Uh, I made a little space in my bedroom and said, "I want to do this podcasting <laughs> thing." You know, nice. but then I prayed and I was like, "God." I want to be on radio, and I really think that you gave me this personality for a reason. Can I be on radio? I appreciate it. Thanks, God. Fast forward, it took five years for me to get a call, and I say this with air quotes, out of the blue, knowing that it was, you know, an answer, you know, God's God's answer. But it's like I knew that in that moment that, that that was the... Mm-hmm. The answer to the prayer that was now is the time for this to happen. Yes. You know, yes. you you do you have this great job that you really like doing, very similar to you, but there's something else that I have in store for you. Exactly. And, and trusting God enough to say, okay, and step out in it. You are you are so right, right. there. It can be a little scary for anyone who's listening. <laughs> It, it can is, be, but, you because know, we're human, right? <laughs> right, right. But I'll tell you what, again, if, you're, if your focus is on God, if you're, That's if, right. I, I, I sign every book with James 4.10, which is humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Now, I don't say that as arrogant, you know, anything like that. And I'm still right. working to be as humble as I can, but doggone it. That's a constant reminder. Every time I sign that, it's a constant reminder to myself. If I'm not looking to God first, then all of this is for nothing. So that's, yeah, that's my reminder. Absolutely. And it is a great reminder. I love it. I love it. Now, <laughs> last you. few last few little questions for you, and I have maybe two or three more. Um, okay. And that is, when it comes to determining which way to publish, I know that many people will ask, well, Dr. Angela, there's self-publishing, there's using um, these publishing houses. How do we make a determination? And my answer tends to be, it's really up to you and how much control mm-hmm. you want to have or how much control you want to give. Right. Right. to those right. who wish to do it. How did you right. make the determination of if you would self-publish or use a publishing house? 
I, I'll tell you what, self or independent publishing to me has kind of scared me just because I don't have the discipline to sit down and make sure, you know, the font size is all correct, the page format is okay, and, you know, the book binding is right and all that, all the little details. I, I just don't have the patience for it, and, and maybe I should learn, and it's probably something I'm going to have to tackle here sooner or later. As far as that goes, I sat down, I prayed about it, I looked online, I scanned through, and I saw so many different ways to do it. I finally decided that uh, I would go with what they call a hybrid publisher, which is basically you send them the work. Now, you're paying for this this work, by the way, but um, – they do all the heavy lifting, as I call it. They make sure the format is correct. They you know, check for grammatical errors. Now, they don't do editing. The, the company I'm working for, they don't do editing, which you know, that's not their deal. But they put together the cover. They put together a nice video for you uh, that you can use on social media. They give you a press release that you can uh, send out to people. So they do the, the, the detail work like that. Now, the one thing that's lacking there is that they don't have editing, which traditional publishing would. Now, for that, you've got to have an agent, and that's hard to get to. And so it's really, again, like you said, Dr. Angel, it's, it's really dependent on what you want to go for. If you can find an agent and they can pitch it to a traditional publisher, go for it. If you feel strong enough, you can do the independent route. Doggone it, there's tons and tons of uh, uh, resources out there you can use for that. So and just keep looking. Keep giving it a try. Talk to people. Get uh, part of Facebook groups. Uh, like I'm, I'm part of a few. You know, talk to people. That's the biggest thing. Get their input. And, and, again, get counsel on what you want to do from there. That will help you in the long run. Very well said. I, I could not add another another bit to that. You are you <laughs> are you. so right. No, really. And, and people need to hear that because um, uh-huh. it could be – for folks that are really in, in – that are uncertain about – just life in general, but but they mm-hmm. feel that there's this nudge to push them. This could be the thing that stops them. Well, I've written right. the pages, like I'm ready, but I don't know how to publish. Oh well, I guess the book wasn't yes. supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like no, no, no. You're not gonna stop there because now right. you've heard a great answer, and and you are right. you are so right. I, I love yeah. the information that you've right. given. Mm-hmm. Writing the book is easy. The the, the stuff that comes after it's hard. <laughs> right. but, um, but that's where you gotta <laughs> have the support. Absolutely. That's where you gotta have. Again, and I found your I found your information online, and figured I'd give it a try. And and you, if you never ask, the answer is always going to be no. So take that chance, right. step out, and and see what happens. So you are you are so right there. So Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Well, Absolutely. Stan Morrow, I have so enjoyed talking with you me today. Too. And I want to say thank you for, for spending some time with me here on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Now, before I let you go, though, one last time, can you remind everyone what is the title of your book, where can we get a copy, and, of course, how do we stay in contact with you? Okay. Yeah, again, uh, title of the book, A Heartbeat in Danger. Uh, I know it's going to challenge you and it's going to provoke your thoughts. Uh, you can find it, uh, as I mentioned, online at uh, CFP or Amazon um, specifically, but anywhere books are sold online. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, so look me up there. I'm at author Dan Morrow on Instagram, so check me out there. I'm starting to get a presence there. I'm starting to learn the, the ins and outs because some of these things the kids use these days. I'm, I'm a little bit older in advance, but uh, some of the things these kids use is just incredible. But, uh, yeah, I'm getting used to that vibe and uh, feeling my way around there. Absolutely, absolutely. Having having a twenty something um, around <laughs> still definitely helps. It's like, no, mom, do that, and it's like, absolutely. Thank you, son. I help. appreciate you. It definitely <laughs> it does, does help. help. You're right. <laughs> well, thank you again, Dan, for being a guest on Daily Spark absolutely. with Dr. Angela. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Dr. Angela. It's been a pleasure talking with you, and I've enjoyed our time together. Me as well. And listeners, thank you for spending time with us. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to spend it with us, and I appreciate that. I hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone.